In Creo Parametric, you can leverage the power of ANSYS for performing structural analysis. Let's take a look at an example of how to do that. Here I have a part model open. Be aware you can analyze both parts and assemblies. I'm going to start with a part for simplicity. And this is the same part that I used in a video to show how to perform geometric element analysis or GEA using Creo Simulate Lite. This time we're using Creo ANSYS simulation. To do that, go to the Applications tab, and then we're going to choose ANSYS simulation. Be aware that it's right next to the icon for Creo Simulate. I will click on ANSYS simulation, and first we get a dialog box that asks us to select our initial simulation type. You can see that there are three choices, structure, thermal, and modal. Structure is selected, so I will click the Finish button. And now we are in the ANSYS simulation environment. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is define my constraints. And I want to simulate that two of these holes are fixed. So I will click the Fix icon and then select one of the holes. Hold down the Control key and select the other hole that I want to restrain. And I will click the OK button. If you take a look in the simulation studies tree, we now have our fixed constraint. Be aware that you can create multiple different constraints. In addition to fixed constraints, you can also use an enforced displacement, which will actually generate a load in your model. And from the support dropdown, you can create different entities like planar constraints, cylindrical constraints, ball constraints, and frictionless displacement constraints. Now I will define my loads, and you can do forces, pressures, moments, gravity, centrifugal loads, temperature loads, and linear acceleration. I will do a force load, and when I click on the icon, it opens up a dialog box. You can change the name of the load, and for the references, I'm going to apply the loading to this particular hole, and for the distribution, you can do total force, force per unit area, or total load at a point, I will do the total force. You can define your force by magnitude and direction, or directional components. I will leave the default, and I'm going to define them relative to the default coordinate system. You can see a little triad in the lower right-hand corner of the screen that indicates your X, Y, and Z directions. Right now, the units would be in Newtons based on my model's units, but I want to use a different set of units. Let's change this to pounds force, and I want to simulate an upward load. So let's use 200 pounds in the upward direction, and I also want it going to the right, which is the X direction, and it'll be a positive value of 100. This is good, let's click the OK button. And now we have our force in the model. There was no material defined for this part. So let's go to the simulation material icon. And right now it's using that default material property that was added in Creo 7.0. Let's click on the more button. And here we have the materials dialog box. I will go to the standard materials granted design database. Let's go to our ferrous metals. And I will use cast steel. You can see the values for things like your density and your Poisson's ratio, Young's modulus, CTE, and so on. I will click the select button. Oops, let's actually add it to the model. I will right click on it, add to model, and then select. And now we've got the cast steel being used for the material. Now I can click the OK button. And Next up, we will specify which results that we want to generate. If I go to the Define Results dropdown, you can create contour plots, vector plots, or results from a template. I'm going to use a contour plot. I like the nice color bands. And here we have displacement magnitude. From the dropdown list, you can also choose displacement in X, Y, and Z, and a variety of different stresses. I will choose to create my displacement magnitude. Click the OK button, and let's define another result 
for my ductile metals. I always like von Mises stress because that takes your normal stresses and your shear stresses, combines them together to give you sort of an overall stress in the model at that particular location. I will click the OK button. And so now we have our two different results defined. The big difference between using something like Creo ANSYS Simulate and Creo Simulation Live is the ability to refine the model. So if I go to the Refine Model tab, well, there's some things here like idealizations, but the big one is being able to control the mesh. But let's go to Mesh Control. This is something that you really don't have much control over in Creo Simulation Live, which is also powered by ANSYS. For one thing, we have our mesh resolution. And right now it's a little bit in the middle. You can change between low and high. I'm going to drag it down a little bit just to show you if we then generate a mesh. Let it crank for a few seconds. And now we see in the lower right hand corner, we have the process status, we can open up the Creo Process Manager, and we can see as this is generating the mesh on the part. And it has completed. Let's click the close button and I can close the little toaster pop up over here. Now I have the ability to display the mesh. And you can see what the mesh is going to look like. Let's say that I want a tighter mesh, more elements in here. We can do different things like we can define from the global mesh size. Hey, here we have the minimum size for the elements. Maybe I'm going to decrease that a little bit. Let's make it 0.08. And then for the maximum face size, let me lower this to a value of 5 for the maximum size, I'm going to change this to a value of 10. Just want to make some small changes to these different numbers. Then I will click the OK button. Now we can generate the mesh again. We can see the process here. Open the process manager. And we can watch the elapsed time. And so that's completed. Let's close out of here and then we can display the mesh and there should be some changes that were made inside of here. All right, we can close out of the mesh control. Let's go back to the ANSYS simulation tab. Now we can run the analysis and again, we can open up the process manager. I'm going to use the plus sign to expand some of these different operations. And so here we see that it's using the mesh. Now it is solving, working pretty quickly. And now it's generating the results. And the results are done. Let's close the process manager. And you can see that we have both basic and advanced results. If I expand basic, well, we have the von Mises stress and the different displacement magnitudes. For the advanced, these are the ones that I created myself. Let's select the displacement magnitude, right click, and then we can launch in the auxiliary window. And now we can see a display of the contours for the displacement. Right now, they are being given in millimeters, but once again, you have a drop down list if you want to change the units that it is being reported in. Also, we can use the start button in order to animate this. Let's go to speed and crank up the speed as high as we can get it. Looks like that's about it for this one. And we can see how this model is displacing. Be aware that in here, you can also spin around and Take a look at where you are getting some of your different peak values. All right, let's now click the close button in order to get out of that set of results. Let's go to the Von Misi stress. Once again, I will right click on it and then launch in the auxiliary window. And let's zoom in a little bit. 
Once again, we can also hit the start button in order to animate the displacements along with the motion. We can see that there is a little red circle indicating where we have some of our peak stresses in the model. So this is good. Let's click the close button. And so that's how you can use Creole ANSYS simulation to perform finite element analysis on your part models. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.